What's up, Spud Nation? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hope your week's going well. I hope you got a chance to check out Clay the Ranger Conrad. Wisconsin's MMA scene is blowing up, and Clay is going to be a big part of that. Hope you got a chance to check out his interview. If not, it's on the site. Check it out. Hit it up. He's got a big fight coming up in March. He is the man. Uh, all of the MMA guys that interviewed, great interviews. If you haven't seen them, all on the website, check them out. Also, Spud Nation, thank you for the positive feedback on all the gear you got. Everyone's loving it. For those of you who have not picked it up or checked it out, we now have pictures on the Facebook pages. So check them both out. We got hoodies, we got t-shirts. Great pricing, great fits, great look. Everyone's going to love them. Contact me, Craig, at thesportscoach.com. All the details you need, I'll hit you up. Everything will be good. It's a really quick turnaround time. You order it, you get it, boom, you love it. All right, Spud Nation, we're going to get right to it. If you haven't heard, there was a huge, huge trade in the NBA that we got to talk about. It's a must. A team got a lot better, and that team is the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, didn't you guys hear about this trade? The Chicago Bulls, they traded with the Toronto Raptors. The Bulls sent James Johnson over to the Raptors. The Raptors must have really wanted this kid. He spent a lot of he spent time in the DL. He's been averaging like three points a game over the past two years. And of course, Toronto of all teams, they want him. They want to build this young team that's so good. But yet, whatever. They're giving up a first round pick for him. If you want to build a young team, you keep your first-round picks, and you go and build through the draft. I don't know what Toronto's doing. They love to be a terrible, terrible team. So congrats. You got James Johnson. Hopefully, he can average about five points a game for you and, and make that worth a first-round pick. Now on to the real deal. The blockbuster that everyone's talking about. Sports coach has to weigh in on this trade. It happened, so we got to talk about it. Finally, we can stop talking about Carmelo Anthony and what team he might go to because he is now a New York Nick. You knew it was going to happen. You knew he was going to go to the team that he wanted to play for. That's the team he's going to take the extension with. So this is how it went down. New York, they get Carmelo. They get Chauncey Billups. Sheldon Williams, the former Dookie. Anthony Carter. Ronaldo Balkman, welcome back to New York. And Corey Brewer, that stud Florida Gator. Those are all the New York Knicks. Well, now, who are the New York Knicks? Denver, totally revamped lineup as well. Wilson Chandler. They have Raymond Felton. I really love Raymond Felton, former Tar Heel. Danilo Gallinari, great up-and-coming player. A little bit of foreign flair, big tall guy, can shoot. Um, also, Timofey Mozgov, a young center, he's a big guy, but he is a brute in the middle. Height and size is at a premium in the NBA. This was a major piece for Denver to get. Denver also gets 2014 first round pick, two second round picks, and three million cold cash. Also, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they threw their name in the hat. They get stuck with Eddie Curry. I'm guessing they just wanted his expiring contract because it wasn't for his basketball skills. And they also get Anthony Randolph. Anthony Randolph didn't see a whole lot of playing time in New York, but this kid has plenty of upside. He's long, he's about 6'10". With his wingspan, he's about 19 feet tall. He can be a very good player. Came out very young, entered the NBA young. So let's see, maybe he can be a contributor for the Minnesota Timberwolves. My take on the whole deal is New York, yes, you got some star power. You got Carmelo, you have him for a couple years in the future. He's got five years plus left in the tank. Melo is a premier scorer. If him and Amare can somehow figure out how to work together, they have a great one two punch. They came out in the press and called it one and one A. Give me a break. Carmelo is going to have to be the guy. He is the guy on every team he plays for. Started back, I'm guessing, in high school. Showed it in college. And once he got to the NBA, Melo needs the ball in his hand. 
if him and Amari can work out some nice pick and rolls and Melo can start feeding Amari the ball, this could be a nice tandem. They also get Chauncey Billups. Chauncey's a nice point guard. Is he that fast-paced, up-tempo guy that head coach Mike D'Antoni wants? We'll find out. We'll see how much Chauncey has left in the tank. What I don't like about this deal, New York completely obliterated their bench. Their bench, their bench is bare. They're talking Sheldon Williams getting some major minutes, coming in for starting center Ronnie Turioff. Really, New York? Anthony Carter seeing minutes. Ronaldo Balkman, how did that work out the first time in New York? Not very well. New York wanted him out, and he left. And then Corey Brewer. Corey Brewer was a phenom in college. He's been very below average in the NBA up till this point. Maybe this rejuvenates his career. I sure hope so. The kid had a bunch of talent. Let's see if they can use it. Now on to the Nuggets. Granted, they're taking a whole bunch of guys from the New York Knicks. The Knicks were a playoff team in the top eight in the East, but... Now they're trading all their major pieces away. Wilson Chandler, great young player. Also, Raymond Felton. Is it the right system in Denver? It is. They like that up-tempo, get it up, push the pace. I like it. J.R. Smith will be there with them. And Felton is surrounded by guys he's familiar with playing with. Danilo. Obviously, Wilson Chandler. And then they throw this big brute, Timofey Mozgov, in there. Denver did all right on this trade. I know they got rid of one of the premier guys in the NBA, but Denver is a deep team now. They have a lot of pieces to trade away if they so choose. If not, use your young guns. They have some nice young talent. Mix it in with Nene, J.R. Smith, a couple of the older pieces from the Denver Nuggets. Not a bad trade overall for Denver. Throw in a first-round pick, a couple second-round picks, get some cash out of it. Not bad. Denver fans, do not feel too horribly about this trade. Now, if they take it a step further and do deal Danilo Gallinari, let's hope they get a nice piece for him because Danilo is a very good player. We'll see how this all shapes up. We can guarantee New York is not done trading. They're going to be chasing down some big size for the middle. They need a center. They need someone that can come in and spell someone at power forward. Or you're going to be seeing a lot of Amari playing the center. You're going to be seeing a lot of Carmelo playing the power forward. And we'll see how that works. Overall, New York taking a step in the right direction because it seems like you need star power in the East. And especially in the New York market. Heading on down to the NCAA Wednesday night's games. we got a couple big ones. Duke, the newly acquainted Newly, yeah, whatever. They're handed the number one seed. Duke's a very good team. Obviously, teams had to falter and stumble for Duke to jump to number one, and they did. Can Duke hang on to the number one spot? That is yet to be determined. They play Temple. Temple in the top 25. Definitely not on Duke's level, but it's college basketball, and anything can happen. I'm picking Duke to win this game. Duke can just kill you from anywhere. And if they're shooting the ball well, they are the best team in the country. Look for Duke to get a big win over a top 25 team late in the year. Also, Missouri taking on Baylor. Every single week, I say Baylor, great team. Running that zone. They're long. they got a couple guys headed to the NBA. But yet, Baylor continues to disappoint. Is it going to end now? I doubt it. Missouri's going to win. They're going to pressure Baylor. It's going to throw their game completely out of whack. Look for Missouri to run away with a nice victory here over Baylor. And the last game, North Carolina taking on North Carolina State. North Carolina State, they're young. They're not a very good team. But it is an interstate rivalry, North Carolina, North Carolina State. Obviously not too far apart. Look for North Carolina to continue to win games and climb in the polls. Heading into March Madness. A well-oiled machine. Go Tar Heels. And let, last thing we're going to hit on right now, NFL action. Yes, while they're talking about their collective bargaining and if there's going to be a lockout and all this crap that the NFL fans, especially myself, 
do not want to hear about. Just fix it, fellas. That's all we want. We need an NFL season next year. But the owners, they're doing what they got to do. They're making moves. They're releasing players, signing players. They're doing what they need to do to make their teams better and give us hope that there's going to be a season next year. couple big names got cut. Bob Sanders, Indianapolis Colts. They push him to the side. You can't blame him. He's hurt an awful lot, but when that young man plays, he is a beast. Jeremy Shockey, see you later, man. No longer in New Orleans State. St. Jimmy Graham, <laughs> touche, my man. You came on strong at the end of the season. You stole his job completely away from him. Look for Jimmy Graham, all you fantasy football players out there. Jimmy Graham, going to be a nice draft pick this year in your fantasy football draft. And lastly, Baltimore Ravens cutting ties with Willis McGahee. Willis, you had a great run at it. Coming back from those tremendously just horrific knee injuries. Had a nice career. Let's see if a team picks you up. Maybe as a second or third running back on their roster. All right, the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, kind of focused on that number one pick. But they did not franchise D'Angelo Williams. Could this be... They're opening the door for Jonathan Stewart to be the guy. We'll find out. D'Angelo Williams, injury plagued, kind of tapered off. Yeah, he'll find a spot on someone's roster, but look for him to be kind of a second running back, change of pace guy for someone. And lastly, on some good news, Champ Bailey signed a four-year extension, Denver Broncos. If they go ahead and draft Patrick Peterson, out of LSU, that cornerback, he's got a great mentor in Champ Bailey. Could be a dynamic duo. And the last story, Super Bowl defending champs, Super Bowl champs, Green Bay Packers, Charles Woodson came out and said publicly, I will switch positions to safety if Namadi Asamoa comes to Green Bay. You send the best shutdown corner in the NFL to Green Bay, how much better do the Packers get? That young talent, you throw in a veteran cornerback who is labeled as the best or second best corner in all the NFL, Packers could be scary for years to come. There you go, Spud Nation. Thanks for tuning in. You want to hit me up, Facebook, Twitter, tell your friends all about what we're doing here at the Sports Couch. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Come back tomorrow. We got more sports happening. We got a great interview coming up later this week. The owner of NGU MMA Gear. He sells some great gear. It's great. Never give up. I love it. We're going to interview him. Yeah. So till next time, Spud Nation. We're out. <laughs>